Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we're gonna to be going over color trends for 2022. So for those of you that don't know, every year around this time, all the different paint companies, they all come out with their different color palettes for the coming year. They pick their colors of the year for what they think is gonna be trending, what they're gonna see in interior design in the coming year. So in this video, we're gonna be going over Benjamin Moore's color palette, as well as Bear, Sherwin-Williams, and PPG as well. And for those of you, cause I know you're out there that are gonna say, oh, just paint your house whatever you want and you don't have to paint your house these colors. Of course, no one asks you to. You don't need to paint your house these colors. These are just suggestions, things that, you know, trends that we see that are maybe gonna be coming down the road that are gonna start to appear in your favorite retailers. So not to get all Miranda Priestly Devil Wears Prada on you, but the truth is, is that these trends and these color trends do affect interior design and they do start to impact what you're gonna see in the stores in the coming year. And don't be surprised, this is a bit of a spoiler for these coming palettes, but don't be surprised if green is what you're seeing in the stores consistently over the next year. I mean, you already are. Let's be honest, it's already everywhere. Okay, so first up, let's talk Benjamin Moore. Now, Benjamin Moore, it's kind of like the designer default in a lot of ways. Like, people just really love Benjamin Moore because it has great quality paint compared to some of the other options that are out there, and their palettes are really on point. And this year is no different. So let's first talk about the color of the year, which is October Mist, which is this really beautiful green color. It's really soft. It's quite warm. In fact, I kind of have this trick that I do. I think I only do this because I'm weird, but I actually use like a color picker tool. Um, I talked about this in my mood board video a while ago, but basically I put it into a color wheel just to see where October mist fell, just to kind of get a feel for it. And once you put in a color wheel, it becomes really clear just how much warmth and just how much yellow is in this green paint. So it's a really sort of soft, warm green tone. I think it's really beautiful on kitchen cabinets. It would be beautiful as a main wall color because it's just light enough that I think you can get away with it as a main wall color in your home. If you really love this green trend, then this could be a really beautiful color for you. I'm gonna say it's not the most surprising or even adventurous choice that Benjamin Moore could have made because, um, you know, if you kind of expected them to throw you a curveball, this wasn't it. Like green has been trending for a while and I think you're gonna see more and more of it in the coming year. But it is this really beautiful color that works really well. As you can see from the color picker, by the way, the complementary color is kind of this really light purple. Reminds me a lot of another color that is on this palette, which is called Hint of Violet. I think those two colors could work really well together because they're actually quite complementary, which I think is quite interesting. But this is a very nice, beautiful color. It's got that really subtle warmth to it. So you're still getting that kind of, you know, green pigments, definitely a green paint. This isn't just kind of an off white. This is definitely green, but there is some sort of warmth that's coming through with this color, which it's just really warm and comforting while still being very natural and organic, which is what has been trending for a while now and probably will continue to do so. So it's a really beautiful choice from Benjamin Moore. Okay, now let's take a look at the rest of Benjamin Moore's palette. And by the way, I will say out of the 14 colors in this palette, six of them are green or sort of have some sort of green undertones to them, which I think is really telling in terms of what Benjamin Moore thinks is gonna be trending coming up in the next year. Okay, so let's talk about one of the really beautiful green paints that I see, which is Morning Dew. So Morning Dew is just a really nice light. It's not quite an off-white, like there's enough green here that I wouldn't classify it as an off-white. You can see in this photo, um, Steam, which we're gonna talk about in a second, as well as October Mist and Morning Dew. I think these three colors work really well together, but you can see with in this photo how different October Mist is compared to Morning Dew. So it is just a little bit of a lighter color, probably if you want to kind of get in on this green trend, but you're not ready to really commit to something that just screams green, this might give you a really sort of subtle note that is um, giving you a little flavor of that green, but not necessarily committing to a full on green paint. Okay, next green to talk about is called Fernwood Green. So this one to me is a little bit more of a mid-tone green. So this uh, has a lower LRV, light reflectance value. So it's gonna uh, not come across as bright as uh, say Morning Dew, we just talked about. So this one really leans yellow to me. It's got uh, quite a bit of warmth to it, so it is still a green. It is quite an interesting, nice color. I think if used correctly, I think it could be really cool. To me though, it just kind of feels a little bit like a baby poop green, which is just kind of an aversion that I have where I just don't like this particular color green. Let me know if you agree, but I don't love when this green leans too, too yellow because um, I just don't think it looks really great on most walls, but I think, you know, it could work in the right space. 
Um, you know, obviously Benjamin Moore with her gorgeous photography has some really beautiful ways of showcasing it on the website. I worry practically speaking, I think it might lean a little bit too yellow, but again, it's another green, so it fits really well with the rest of this palette. Okay, next up, let's talk smoky green. So smoky green is an interesting green because it gives you an option in this palette of a much cooler green than some of the other ones we talked about. So most of the other ones here, I think have a lot of more of a kind of yellowy tone to them, um, and they lean a little bit lighter and a little bit warmer for green. This one here though is quite a little bit cooler. It's still fairly light, but it's got a lot more blue and even gray tones into it. So for those of you that really like cooler colors and you kind of like the green trend, but you maybe don't want to go into the warm area, this might be a really interesting and cool option for you because it is a little bit cooler. It's gonna lean a little bit more gray and it's not gonna have that sort of yellow warmth that you're gonna get from some of the other colors. Okay, let's move into one of the darker colors in this palette, which is Gloucester Sage, not Gloucester. The Brits will definitely go after you if you call it Gloucester. So Gloucester Sage is actually really interesting. It's really quite dark. I think it feels really woodsy to me. I'd like to see this in like a cabin. It just feels a little bit like it's kind of almost like an olive color. It's really, really dark, but woodsy, and it's got a lot of brown in it. So again, this is quite warm, even if it is a darker color. Benjamin Moore is just covering all your bases with all your different options for green. No matter what your flavor of green, there is an option here. You want it light, you want it dark, you want it warm, you want it cool. There's something in here for everybody. I feel like it's quite a rustic green and would work really well with maybe if you like something like a you know a rustic farmhouse or something like that I think this would look really cool okay next up is one of my favorites from this palette we're gonna go through all the greens and then we'll talk about the other ones I promise and that's High Park High Park is kind of like got a really interesting almost like an emerald to it right like it's kind of a little bit more of a true green this is actually this kind of green sagey color is the direction I thought actually Benjamin Moore would more likely go than uh, October Mist which is a little bit lighter and a little bit warmer but this is kind of really more I would call like sort of a true green. That's what it feels like to me. Really beautiful, sophisticated. I would love to see this in a living room or a dining room. I think it would really be beautiful. Really, really great solid option. The thing I also want to say before I move into all the other colors here on the palette is that what I love about Benjamin Moore is they really um, make it easy to combine all the different colors. Like you really can't go wrong because all these colors are meant to work so well together. And I love that. Some of the other palettes, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, you can definitely go wrong if you combine colors incorrectly. But I think here, Benjamin Moore has done such a good job of making a really cohesive palette, and I love that. So definitely with all these greens, all these different other colors we're gonna talk about in a minute, I think you can pair most of these greens together and it's all gonna work. Okay, so let's move on to collector's item. So let's move away from green for a minute. We'll come back to it with the other palettes, don't worry. Collector's item is a really beautiful sort of warm, I would say this is an off-white, but it's definitely not as light as like a Simply White or a Chantilly Lace or some of the other really light bright whites that Benjamin Moore offers. This is quite creamy. So there is quite a bit of a yellow undertone here. So you can already see that all those greens that we talked about would pair beautifully with collector's items. So Fernwood, which, you know, I didn't love, but there you go. So October Mist, Morning Dew. I think both those colors would work really well. Even High Park that we just talked about. I think those colors would all work really well here because it's just got like that little bit of warmth to it, but it's still a really beautiful, soft, comforting white. I think if you're looking for like a really soft, creamy white, this is a really great choice for you. Now, if you're looking for a white that's maybe a little bit less creamy and you're looking for closer to a true white, I would recommend Steam. Steam is a really nice, beautiful white and really complements uh, some of the other things that we've talked about in this palette as well. But this to me doesn't lean as creamy as collector's items. So uh, this might be something that's just a little bit more closer to a true white. I mean, both of them are off whites to be honest with you, but this one feels a little bit more crisp to me and therefore might work better for you if you don't want it to you know, appear yellow uh, in your room and you're worried collector's item might be a little bit too creamy. So Steam is another really great option. Okay, next up is Pale Moon. So Pale Moon is this really beautiful soft yellow. I will say that, fun fact, yellow is actually my favorite color, but not really for paint. Um, Pale Moon is, you know, let's be honest, they always, Benjamin Moore is so good at their, at pairing all these colors together in a really sophisticated way, and it always looks gorgeous in photos. I think yellow paint is often really difficult to pull off in a home. When it works, it really works, but when it misses, it can just look 
little too buttery, and I think Pale Moon may sort of appear that way in your own space. So I would, you know, always kind of err on the side of caution when dealing with these really heavily pigmented yellows. It's actually quite a soft yellow, but it's definitely yellow. This isn't an off-white that has yellow undertones. This is a full-on yellow paint. Yes, it can be beautiful, especially if you're pairing it uh, with some of those kind of warmer greens we've talked about. But, you know, it's an interesting option for people. I don't know how many people will take them up on it. Pale Moon might be a little bit more of a special paint for a special person, but definitely it feels cohesive with the rest of the palette. Okay, next up is Natural Linen. Now, Natural Linen, I think, is more likely to fit in more people's homes because this is just a really beautiful, nice, I mean, it's linen. It like, looks like the color, it looks like linen. It's, it's not an off-white. There's definitely more depth to it than that. So it's kind of got sort of a taupe feel to it. It's definitely more of a taupe, but it is quite light. Uh, I think it would work quite well in a lot of different spaces. To be honest, this is actually what I thought they were going to go for a color of the year. If they were going to go for something that wasn't green, I thought they would go for something like this. It reminds me a lot of muslin that was in last year's color palette. If I was going to say if you remember, but like who remembers last year's color palette but me because I'm weird. But um, it reminds me of muslin from last year. But I do think this is a really beautiful color. I think it would work with a lot of the colors that we talked. Again, Benjamin Moore, they're just all, it works so cohesively together. But this just is a really trendy color right now because it's just this really nice, warm, neutral color um, that is got a little bit more depth than your typical just flat white paint, but it kind of leans a little bit warm and into these sort of grayish, beige, taupe sort of color tones that we're seeing that are so popular right now. Okay, now let's get into something that is a little bit darker and maybe even a little bit different than anything else in this palette is called Mysterious. Mysterious is sort of this denim colored, kind of navy, sort of darker blue color. It is quite dark. I think it's actually really interesting that it made a place in this palette. Here's why I think it's in this palette though, is that so often I think people, especially now because like black is so trendy, people really are looking to black as a way to sort of anchor the space and provide like a real contrast to some of these other color or lighter tones that they're using in their space. And Mysterious is sort of a interesting color because it sort of provides that substitute for black in this palette because there's no black paint in this palette. But Mysterious is quite dark and I think, yes, it's a navy, but I think it's dark enough that it does provide that really grounding influence on some of the rest of the colors in this palette. Benjamin Moore actually defines this palette as like the green is like the stem and all the colors are sort of like these beautiful flowers that come from that. So it's like very natural in that way. And I think sort of mysterious sort of fits into that narrative. I hope that makes sense. It's maybe a little bit too abstract, but I hope you kind of get what I'm talking about. And speaking of flowers, there is no color that exemplifies that more than the next one, which is called Wildflower, which is this really interesting sort of peachy, rosy, kind of a terracotta, but it, it's quite light. So I wouldn't say it's quite a terracotta because it's a little bit darker. I don't love pink personally in design, but this is not a really feminine light, you know, first light pink that we saw a few years back. This is something with a little bit more depth and leaning a little bit more red. Definitely more heavily saturated some of those lighter pinks that we've seen trending in the last several years. Really beautiful color. Again, I don't know how popular it's gonna be because I think it's quite specialized. I think it would look really gorgeous on like a really interesting like front door or something like that. I think that would be beautiful. I think Wildflower would look really cool. So I'm kind of excited to see what people do with it. I don't know if it's gonna necessarily uh, make it into a lot of people's homes because it is quite a specific color that I don't know if it's gonna work for a lot of people's palettes, but definitely interesting, very cool, and definitely fits with the rest of this palette. And finally, for Benjamin Moore, we have Venetian Portico, which I love. It's a little bit pink, but not, not like, it annoys me pink, you know what I mean? Like, so the Venetian Portico is just this like creamy beige sun-baked terracotta feel to it. I mean, it's Venetian Portico. I mean, it just feels like it belongs in Venice, right? This is just a really gorgeous sort of clay-based color. Definitely complements the rest of the colors in the palette. And I think this color is also very, very trendy right now because you're again seeing these warm sort of neutral tones. This is a color that I think will appear in a lot of people's homes, probably more than Wildflower, as I said, which which is a bit more specialized, but this is a very, very interesting and really cool color. So definitely excited to see more of it. I think this is, it just works beautifully with the rest of the palette. So that is it from Benjamin Moore. Overall, I love the palette. I think they did a really, really great job of creating something that's really cohesive and very on trend. I knew green was in, obviously. We've, we've talked about that on this channel before, but I think I was surprised at just how in. I mean, six of the 14 colors, that's a lot of green, but let's now move on to 
bear paint. If you live in North America, you're definitely familiar. This paint is the paint from Home Depot. So it's exclusively sold at Home Depot and it's a very popular paint company and they've come up with their own palette. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so this one, remember I said you can't go wrong with the Benjamin Moore palette. I feel like with the bear palette, you definitely can go wrong. It's almost like there's two different palettes here. Like you've got this really light sort of even like pastel tones. And then you've also got this really heavily saturated sort of darker mid-tone, but very saturated color choices and a very different palette from Bear, but it's all mixed into one big palette. So um, I don't know how well it's all gonna combine. I think you probably can go wrong if uh, you combine some weird colors together. But anyway, their color of the year is called Breezeway. And Breezeway is kind of a green, but it is really more of a blue green. And it really feels like a kind of minty green, which surprises me because I don't know if the minty greens are really actually what's trending right now. I think we're really going for more of a, maybe a rustic or natural, uh, maybe olive tones or, or like sage colored. I think that's more popular. I feel like mint, this color to me, it's even called Breezeway. It just feels very coastal. So this feels like a very coastal palette, but it is a really interesting sort of soft, light color. I do think a lot of people will like this because it might fit your style. I know it does fit a lot of people's style. Um, it's not particularly like my taste, but it's still a really beautiful color. It's just got this really cool and minty version of green that I didn't expect uh, necessarily to be trending for the coming year. Other colors that I think are really interesting from Bear, uh, one is called Sunwashed Brick. This is sort of a, like, again, this is kind of a little bit Bit of a terracotta or clay based, but this leans a little bit less brown and a little bit more pink. So unlike say what we talked about with um, Venetian Portico before, I would say this one is more of a pink paint, but overall this is a nice sort of light uh, pinkish hue if that's something that you're really into. Next up, of course, they have Whisper White, which is just a really sort of clean, fresh uh, white paint. This doesn't feel as warm or creamy as some of the ones we saw from Benjamin Moore, like Collector's Item, for example, but this one definitely feels uh, just a really nice sort of balanced kind of neutral white paint, which I think could complement the uh, other colors in this palette. Again, I think this would speak to a little bit more of that coastal vibe. I could just picture Breezeway with some of this Whisper White working together in just a really sort of nice coastal space, if that's what you're into. So next up, you also got Nightingale Gray, which is a nice, interesting sort of light taupe colored paint. This is uh, something that has been around for a little bit. The grayish paint is not something that is crazy new, but I do think it's a grayish sort of paint that uh, will also fit really well, I think, with the rest of this color palette. The lighter side of the palette, not the darker, more saturated colors that we, um, you know, are also on Bear's color palette, which um, I don't think work as successfully. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit less impressed with the Bear Paint color palette, but there could be some interesting colors and different combinations that you might find, especially if you like Coastal. There's definitely something in there for you if that is your design style. Next up, let's talk Sherwin-Williams, which this is a more successful take than I think what we saw from Bear, but their color of the year is called Evergreen Fog. Now, Evergreen Fog is just this really beautiful, natural, I don't know, there's just something so calming and serene about this color. And what's interesting about Sherwin-Williams is they actually didn't do like a whole palette what they do is they just come up with their color of the year and then they pick sort of colors that they can combine together in a really beautiful way. So I think Evergreen Fog is just this really gorgeous sort of sage green. This, in my opinion, is more of a successful take on the green trend than uh, Breezeway, but it's just my opinion. But I do think it's just this really gorgeous um, sort of nice, interesting kind of sage green, which I think is really beautiful and just creates like a really calm, serene space. I think for those of you that maybe feel like black and white and gray and different versions therein of these sort of neutral paint colors um, are really timeless and comfortable and you just feel safe using those colors. This might be an interesting way for you to jump in on the green trend because there is enough gray here that I think it's going to work long term, but it is definitely a color that feels green, but there's just something so calming and relaxing and comfortable about this color of green. It just feels very natural, which I think does have a timeless quality as well to it that I don't think you necessarily should feel Feel like this paint is um, so super on trend that's going to be you know super passe in a couple of years. I think it's a really beautiful timeless color. So colors that they've paired it with are Shoji White, Urbane Bronze, which was actually the color of the year from 2021, um, Accessible Beige, Uber Umber, Woven Wicker, and Bakelite Gold. So I think that those colors do all work really well with Evergreen Fog. I think that is a really beautiful color palette. I'm sort of getting a little bit of a Japan vibe, which is obviously a design style 
style that is very popular right now. Urbane Bronze is a really beautiful color and pairs really well. And I also love this woven wicker that they've paired it with. I think if you combine um, Evergreen Fog and Urbane Bronze and woven wicker, the three of them together, I think that's really beautiful. Maybe with the Shoji White, just to have that little bit of balance there with having sort of that white option to make it really light and fresh at the same time. But honestly, those colors together, mm, just really gorgeous. I think that's actually a really good foundation for someone if they wanted to go into something that's a little bit darker and more sophisticated, a little bit moodier. It's not so sort of fresh and light and floral like we saw from Benjamin Moore. It's just got this really woodsy, sophisticated, a little bit rustic uh, sort of take on green. And I think it's a really cool color palette. I mean, it's not a full palette, but you can definitely see that they've thought through this combination and I think it works really well. Okay, lastly, let's just talk about PPG. Now, PPG has actually three different color palettes, which I'm not gonna dive into all of them because this video is already long enough, but I will talk about their color of the year because I just really wanted to show you how trending green is, and that is Olive Spring is their color of the year. This is a really beautiful color. Again, I think this really sort of is a more on-trend take to what Bear did with Breezeway. I think this color is really soft and warm. It's kind of got this olive sort of tone to it. That's right in the name. Uh, it's actually a really good name, Olive Sprig, because it is olive, but it's obviously this really beautiful natural color that would pair well with all the different colors that we've talked about. Well, most of the colors that we've talked about today. Um, it's a really beautiful color, and I think PPG really nailed that color of the year, obviously. They really got it on trend. If we're seeing it from all these different designers that work at all these different color companies, you can definitely see that green is definitely trending, and you're going to see this more and more and more. Okay, that's it for me for today, you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave you with my video for Benjamin Moore's 2021 color palette of the year. That is last year's, because I still think a lot of those colors are just as relevant and just as awesome today as they were last year. So I will see you all in that video. Thanks. Bye.